Welcome back. Great that you're watching these flip videos. We're at a stage in the course now where it's fairly important to get our head around Mao Zedong as a communist. Now, I've been emphasizing when I've been talking to you to see him essentially as a dictator, but certainly he is a dictator from a mindset of communism. Whether or not he was true to its values all the way along, whether he changes as he moves later into his life, it's really important to recognize that truly he identified himself as a communist. So he's coming from a whole lineage of thinkers who refer to themselves as communist or Marxist Leninist. So, of course, let's start the ball rolling with Karl Marx, the author of the Communist Manifesto, who that book was published in 1848 in Britain, and it established the word communism. And um, Marx co-authors the book, The Communist Manifesto, with Friedrich Engels. Engels really does little intellectually with the book. What Engels' contribution to the writing of the Communist Manifesto is, is money. It requires someone to pay Marx as he's writing and someone to pay the publication fees. So Marx and Engels co-authoring the Communist Manifesto. The theory put forward in the Communist Manifesto is essentially that there is a um, historical materialism process that takes place where history is, I guess, an engine of progress that societies improve over time through set phases. And the ultimate high point of all those phases is an almost utopian vision of the world where everyone shares, where there's no private property, there's no need for laws, there's no need for jails because no one commits any crimes, where everyone lives as one in a community, communism. So this theory is sometimes referred to as Marxism, it's a form of socialism. Sometimes it's even referred to as Marxian socialism. Now, in 1917, the first Marxist revolution takes place. The first communist revolution takes place. And that's in Russia, led by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. So, as of 1917, the ideas of Marx have been adapted and changed in a Russian context by Lenin. So we have a concept called Marxism that leads to a concept called concept called Leninism. The ideas that Lenin follows, he might later on say he belongs to the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, but they really aren't always adhering even to Marx's idea. So we have an adaption over time. Marx writes a theory with Engels, publishes it in 1848. Lenin adapts that theory to match the Russian, the Soviet conditions of Russia in 1917. He's prepared to adapt it. We then have Stalin, who takes Lenin's ideas and adapts them further. And we have while Stalin might say in rhetoric he is a communist, a member of the Communist Party, really the ideology that he is following is Stalinism, a form of totalitarianism. A contemporary of Stalin is our man, Mao Zedong. And Mao Zedong is tracing that lineage back. Mao Zedong would identify as being inspired by the ideas of Karl Marx. He would be also recognizing the importance of the first communist party in the world to be successful in power. That party was led by Lenin and then later Stalin. Mao would recognize these as important contributors to communist thought. But really, are they any of them matching the ideas, the principles that Marx had in the first place? Probably not. So what were those principles, the ideology? I want to put to you that trying to understand nations, dictatorships, regimes that call themselves communist through the prism of the ideology of communism as described by Marx can be really taking you up the garden path. It misleads. Let's 
be using that as a guess or have that as a bit of a caveat, a warning before we even progress. But at the same time, let's recognise that we do need to understand what communism basically is. So anyone who calls themselves a communist is essentially saying that they are following the ideas of Marx. Now, Marx wrote his book during a very specific time, the Industrial Revolution in Britain. He was a German of Jewish descent, even though he turns into an atheist. He's been on the run. He writes a book called The Communist Manifesto with Engels. Um, it's in Northern England in the 1840s. The term communism gets thrown around, but when it's used by Marx, it's within discussion of this theoretical historical process that Marx developed. Sometimes it's referred to as the process of dialectics. Another way of referring to it is the process of historical materialism. But we're not doing a political science course here. We don't need to look into that level of theory in this course especially since Marx deviates, or rather Mao deviates, from what Marx wrote. The process, the theories of Karl Marx are called Marxism. Marxism was one of many forms of socialism. Socialism essentially is saying that public property is preferable to private property, that those who create the wealth the workers should share in the most benefits of the wealth as opposed to capitalism. And we can talk about that in depth another time. But Marxism is one form of socialism. Broadly speaking, it's a radical ideology. Broadly speaking, we could say it's one that says those who produce the wealth of a nation, of a community, should share in the benefits that wealth produces. Other forms of socialism include Fabian socialism or anarchism, both very different types of socialism. The Communist Manifesto calls for the creation of communist parties that are pursuing this ultimate historical end goal that he calls communism. A lot of people use Marxism and communism as if the words are completely interchangeable. That's a really imprecise way of putting it together. When people call themselves communists, they're often essentially saying they're members of communist parties, not necessarily adhering to the ideas of Karl Marx. A true communist state, as described by Marx in the Communist Manifesto, has never existed. The countries of the 20th and 21st century such as the Soviet Union in the 20th century, North Korea now, the People's Republic of China now and in the 20th century for both of them, would be unrecognisable as communist in the sense Marx uses the word. So while these communist parties might use the rhetoric, the language of communism, use the theories of Marxism, we need to see through the words through the propaganda, through the packaging, if you like, and see how those regimes really work. Just because someone says they are in the Communist Party, they are a communist, doesn't mean they are truly at one with the definition of communism that comes out of Karl Marx's work. Frank Dickotter, in one of the uh, podcasts in which he's interviewed, and I've got that for you in our, uh, in our content library, essentially says that to a dictator, ideology doesn't really matter, that in the 20th and 21st centuries, dictators are primarily about power. So I guess the key, dictate, uh, key takeaway I want you to have here is don't get overly thrown if you start to feel in your research, in your reading, in your study, that Mao's actions seem inconsistent with his belief in Marxism or communism. Don't be thrown if his ideas run counter and his actions run counter to what a communist in theory believes. There's the theory and the lived reality that we need to be aware of 
with most dictators and Mao's no different. Some historians even think ultimately when we strip away a few decades of belief in a system, Mao ultimately acts in his own self-interest rather than in the interests of promoting a particular ideology. So he may have been in the Communist Party. He may at some level believe in Marxism and be committed to that cause in his case for decades. But it doesn't mean that he is truly living out those values. And if those values seem in any way at odds with what he needs to do to maintain power, he tends to maintain his own power. So I throw this one to you as I make this group of dictators, including Hitler, including Idi Amin and Muammar Gaddafi of Libya, uh, Stalin and Mao himself into the corner, I'll throw to you, are any dictators ever really to serve the interest of others? I mean, Hitler would have argued he was leading the German people back to greater times. Where do you sit with this? Are dictators ever really truly believing they're serving the dictators of others or is it all a charade? I'm going to leave you with this thought. Mao says he is the leader of the Communist Party. I'm sorry, I'll get it right. Mao was the leader of the Communist Party. And that's fairly distinct as a set of thoughts. To say you're a communist means something. It has, there is some value in understanding what communist ideologies actually are.